right, so here we are. We're going to take a look at the Lavo MC Squared 36. This is their uh, kind of entry level board, I guess. This is uh, their attempt to break into the live sound market. Lavo is famous for their broadcast sound boards, but this is their first board kind of targeted at the live sound market. So we're going to go ahead and boot this up. It's a little bit more uh, well, it's a little different than the other boards we've looked at because the Lavos do not have power switches. If you want to power them up or down, you have to unplug them from the wall. So we're going to plug it in, get some power going, and we can take a look at how this thing boots up. So it's coming online now. So again, one of the neat things about Lavo is that they are very much an industry standard, but in a very different industry. So. Some of the things that go into the Lavo are some really heavy, much more so than some of the other boards we've looked at. Some really heavy redundancy is built into this guy. Uh, like I said, it doesn't even have a power switch, so you can't shut it down without unplugging it. You can't turn it on without plucking power into it. And as soon as you do give it power, it immediately boots. Um, some of the things that go into that it has two dsp engines which is really unique so you can use a pair the pair of dsp engines and get a certain channel count and bus count or you can split the dsp engines back into their individual pieces and then you get less channel count but you get true redundancy so if you had a dsp engine die in the middle of a broadcast of some sort, everything would continue to work. You wouldn't notice a difference. It would just keep going. You get a warning light, obviously. but So it's that kind of true redundancy that is built into this. And I think that comes from that, you know, we're live on air kind of mentality. Uh, the two screens themselves, and in this model, there are two fader bays. The two fader bays and the two screens are all hot swappable. So obviously there are two power supplies, but uh, in addition to that, I can, let's say I've got my master section over here. Let's say it dies in the middle of a show. I could be in the middle of a live broadcast and do these three screws along the front edge of the console here. There's a little spring that pops this front edge up about an inch or so, so you can get your fingers under it and grab it. Lift this up and there's a USB cord and a power connector. You undo both of those, take that out, put a brand new one in, plug it in, plop it back down, screw it into place, and your band or your show is still going the whole time. So that's kind of a neat feature. Uh, you can do apparently the same thing with the screens or either of the fader bays. So it's that I'm going to run 24-7, 365 kind of mentality that is pretty neat uh, the way they've implemented that on this console. So now we've got it up and running. You can see it's uh, booted. I do have some virtual sound check stuff playing into it. Uh, we'll talk about how to make that work and what it looks like in a little bit, but um, very futuristic look to it. Uh, I love the big giant touch screens. They are touch screens, so you can you know, change your pickup point for the meters themselves. Uh, I can view over here on this right. I've got these two views. I can choose to view my expander, my compressor, so I can pick what shows up in these two areas here. Um, so the touch screens themselves are a little bit, um, yes, they are touch screens, but you don't use them a whole lot during the process of mixing a show. I find that I don't even touch the screens for anything. That's because I have all the hardware controls for everything down here. So I've got EQ, compressor, gate, um, aux sends, all of these controls are on physical knobs or buttons. So you wind up you can almost forget that these are touch screens except for a few things you can do during the actual setup itself. So you can choose uh, your inputs here, uh, local IO, microphones, and you see your list of inputs and stuff. Um, there's a little bit of a problem with the implementation there, so I'll come back around to that in a little bit, but um, just kind of some overall thoughts of the console. This is the 24 fader model. They have a 16 fader model and a 40 fader model. So this is kind of the medium size. Um, I have felt a little cramped on the 24 fader model. Boy, I really want the 40 fader if we were to go Lavo. Uh, what that does is it takes this entire 16 fader section that's over here and that screen that goes with it and duplicates it on that side of the console. 
uh, you don't get all of the con center control section is what they call this. You don't get that duplicated, so it's blank like this on the third bay over there. Um, but 40 faders, you know I'm a big fan of more faders and knobs. is always going to be better for me. I like lots and lots of control on physical controls. So uh, that's kind of what the board looks like. We'll take a look at uh, how you route some signal and stuff in next.